Welcome back to the Science of Photography. We're continuing our discussion about pinhole cameras, and today we're going to be talking about pinhole lens boards. Here we have an Intrepid 8x10 camera, which I'm going to be showing you how to make and calculate the optimal pinhole for a pinhole lens board for this camera. Maybe you just got into large format photography and you looked at this as a low cost option and then look at the lenses and said, okay, well the lenses aren't as affordable as this camera is. So let me start with a pinhole, which is a cheap and easy way to actually be able to produce images on this camera and get used to large format. So what will we need for this? Well, we're obviously going to need a pinhole, which you can either make or buy, and we're going to need a lens board that fits this camera. The Intrepid 8x10 is going to use Cinar lens boards, but you may have another large format camera that uses something like uh, Calumet or Cambo lens board. So just make sure that your lens board is matched to your camera. As for the pinhole size, we're going to talk about the optimum using, wouldn't you know it, a little bit of math. So stay tuned for that. Hey fellow photographers, what did you photograph today? So making a pinhole lens board for your camera is not as simple as gluing a pinhole to a lens board, popping into the camera and hoping that things come out. Of course we want the images to be of highest quality, so we're going to go turn to our friend Math to determine the optimal pinhole diameter and the optimal distance at what we set the pinhole from from the camera using the bellows. The really interesting thing about a large format camera is that we can actually change the focal length on the fly by simply extending the bellows. By extending in and out, we are essentially changing the focal length of the camera. So stay tuned for some really interesting mathematical properties that come out of this ability, how we can change the focal length on the fly using the same pinhole. So now for everyone's favorite segment, quick math. So I've been over this a couple times, so if you've been here watching the, the channel videos about pinhole photography, this might be old hat. So I'm going to go through it a little bit quickly. If you're new here, consider subscribing to the channel and liking this video if you find this useful. If you don't like this video, hit the dislike button twice. Okay, so we have our optimal pinhole camera design, which is pinhole diameter is equal to square root of all this nonsense. 2.44 times square, uh, the wavelength of light lambda times focal length over one plus M. Now what's interesting about this video is that we're gonna talk a little bit more about M than we have in previous videos, so stay tuned. Okay, so I'm gonna rearrange this so I get D as an input and I get F as an output. So I put my pinhole diameter in because I went ahead and bought this as impulse purchase. And now I'm gonna try, try and figure out what focal length I have to set this to so I get a, uh, the most optimal image. So we rearrange the terms. We square both sides, we move some stuff around. This is what you end up with. D squared over 2.44 lambda, and I put one plus M over here, and you'll see why in a second, equals focal length. Now it's really interesting because Intrepid themselves have a pinhole lens board for their camera, and they say it is a 0.5 millimeter pinhole, which it, this is actually, actually exactly what this is, but they say the optimum is actually 140 millimeters. Well, I think they, I'm not gonna call them wrong, I'm just gonna say maybe they're using a suboptimal formula, but here at the Science of Photography, we have the best math in the biz. So let's look at it. Take 0.5, five, square it. I don't know if you can see that with the camera in the way. 0 0.5 square it divided by 2.44 times 55 nanometers, which is the wavelength of green light. And I'm gonna get put in zero for M just for now. And you'll see that the optimal diameter is actually 186 millimeters roughly. I'm gonna round that to 180 millimeters and you'll see why, because it's gonna make the rest of the math a little bit easier. So whereas Intrepid said it's 140, I say on good authority, uh, you know, all my friends in physics and, uh, you know, Newton and all those, all my buds say it's 186. So, 186, round it to 180. What can we do with that information? Let's call that 180x. Put x up here. Now we're going to talk about m. We haven't talked about m before very much. And this is where things get really interesting. So x is that 180, that whole quantity from before. And so remember, x is going to change based on your pinhole diameter. Mine is going to be 180 because it's a 0.5 millimeter pinhole times one plus M equals focal length. So let's change M and see what happens to focal length. Well, I just said if we put zero in, we get 180. That's what I just talked about. But what if M was one? If M was one, then our optimal focal length would actually be 360 millimeters because it'd be 180 times one plus one is two. Uh, two plus two is four minus one. That's three quick maths. So we have, uh, if M is one, we get a focal length of 360 millimeters. If M is two, this becomes three. Three times 180 is going to be 540 millimeters. Now, what does this mean? So it might be helpful if I actually discuss what M is. M is magnification. Magnification is defined as negative DI over DO. Well, what do those things mean? DI is distance to the image. DO is distance to the object. So, it, you know, in sort of lens ray diagrams and things like that, we can discuss about distance to the image and from the lens, or in this case, the pinhole, to the object is distance to the object. 
So what does this mean and why is this negative here? This negative is just for convention, we're gonna ignore it. The convention is that if you have a lens or a pinhole, whatever you see optic-wise is going to be, the image is gonna be reversed because it gets flipped over, right? So that's why the negative sign's there, but we're gonna ignore it. So distance to the image, well that's simple, right? It's just the pinhole to the film plane and luck, lucky enough for us when we have this nice bellows here, we can just set the distance of the image to whatever we want by racking this back and forth, right? So distance to the image is actually just the focal length of the camera because it's distance from the pinhole to film plane. Easy, so it turns out that F is actually equal to DI. So that just leaves DO and we have everything else we need to calculate DO, so the distance to the object. Now this will be the, what distance to the object means is that for a given pinhole diameter of 0.5 over here and a given magnification, what would be the optimum focal length and what would be the optimum distance to the object to have the best sharpness at that given combination. So let's figure it out. So if we have M of zero, how do we get zero from this? So we have 180 over DO. What does DO have to be to get zero? It's gotta be infinity. So something over infinity is tends to zero, so we call it zero. So this becomes infinity, which means that objects at infinity are going to be in focus. And because it, a pinhole camera has a infinite depth of field, we basically get everything in focus. This is how we've been making our pinholes since day one. But now we're gonna mix it up a little bit. M of one, how do we get one if F or DI is equal to 360? Well, something divided by itself is one, so we put 360 over here. So distance to the image equals distance to the object gives you a one magnification. How do we get two? Well, the, here for 540, the image distance, DI, needs to be twice as much as DO. So this is just is half as much as this. So that's on 270 millimeters. So here's something interesting, right? This is saying that if you want a magnification of one, a one-to-one -one magnification that is, you have to have the image distance, the focal length sent to 360, and you have to place your objects 360 millimeters from the pinhole. And what's really interesting about this is that this is basically saying that the distance to the image and the distance to the object are the same, which also means that the height of the image and the height of the object are going to be the same. If, we, if you know your lens ray diagram physics formulas for simple convex lenses and that kind of stuff, this follows, right? So that means that whatever you take a picture of is gonna be one to one on the film. So if you take a object that is three by four inches, it's gonna be represented by three by four inches of your negative of your eight by 10 negative. So this actually turns out to be a one to one macro pinhole. Not really, a, I was gonna say macro lens, not really a lens, it's a pinhole. So it's like a one to one macro pinhole, which means that objects are exactly as they appear, unlike your right mirror on your car where objects are closer than they appear. Objects are gonna be exact same size as they appear, which also means that this of a magnification of two is gonna give us a two to one pinhole, uh, macro pinhole. What that means is that objects are gonna be magnified twice. So something that is three by four inches is gonna be six by eight inches. It's gonna actually be blown up. So we can get some really interesting macro properties from using the same pinhole. So quick recap, with using a 0.5 millimeter pinhole, we calculate that the optimal distance here is gonna be 180 millimeters for a zero magnification, and then we have these two other magnifications if we wanna do one-to-one -one macro or two-to-one macro work. But here's where it gets even more interesting. We have to talk about F numbers, right? And so this is, you know, how big of an F number, how small is that aperture relative? Because it changes with focal length. Because remember, the F number of a camera is simply the focal length divided by the diameter of the opening. So I'll denote this capital F as to not get confused with lowercase f. So 180 divided by 0.5 is gonna be F360. This divided by 0.5 is gonna be F720. And this divided by 0.5 is gonna be F1080, which is insane. That's an absolutely insane F number. You're probably used to your camera with like F16, F22. Large format cameras, usually lenses go up to F64. We've made pinhole cameras with, you know, F250 before, F1080. 80. That is an insane amount of light blockage, uh, which means that exposures are going to be in hours, not minutes, if not days, depending on how much light you have. So you're going to get some really, really wild, interesting stuff with that. Not to mention reciprocity, which I've covered in other videos. It's going to get absolutely insane. But it's interesting that, you know, this is probably where, where this pinhole is going to live 99% of the time. But I mean, if you want to go experiment with some crazy stuff, I mean, this is how you get macro pinhole lenses. So all that's left after all that math is to actually show you how to measure the focal lengths for this camera or any camera uh, that has you know, a system where you can rack the focus in and out.
All right, so I've got the Intrepid 8x10 here, and the first thing we want to do is actually get a film holder, preferably one that doesn't have film in it already. I've made that mistake before. But we want an 8x10 film holder, and we actually want to take one of the dark slides out. So this will be our film plane. This is exactly where the film is going to sit, and this is where we're going to measure from. You could also measure, I'm assuming you can measure from the ground glass, because the ground glass should be in the exact place of the film plane. This will be a little bit more precise, and you actually won't end up scratching the ground glass by accident for whatever reason. So we're going to take that, we're going to put it in our camera like we normally would. So that's in there. So now we have a back here that sits exactly where our film sits. And now, I get my lens board that I'm going to use. Again, this is a Copal One Cinar lens board. And before I put the pinhole in here, I want to use this as my measurement template. Essentially, I want to put this in here as I would if it had the pinhole in it. But now I'm going to actually get a really accurate measurement. Because what I'm going to do, the pinhole is going to sit on the back of this, so I can measure right up to the back lip from the film plane to here in order to get very precise measurements. So here I'm on the fifth... Um, there's one, two, three, four, five little places where I can move this front standard. Um, so on the fifth one, which I think is going to be appropriate for the 360 millimeter, and actually I know that the on the website it's, Intrepid says their max bellow extension is 540. Um, so I'm pretty sure at full extension is where we're going to get that 540. So let's see. And here's a, here's another reason. So this is pretty much max extension. Here's another reason. This is, well, we can measure it real quick. And actually I have this um, measuring tape that's in both meters and inches. So both imperial and metric units, which is really, really helpful uh, because now I can get millimeters because everything's in millimeters, right? Um, so let's see how long this actually is. We're just gonna stick this in here until it hits the film plane. That's kind of why you don't wanna put the, do it on the, off the glass because you might scratch the glass. So that looks like actually 540 right to the edge. So I'm going to call that 540, which is perfect. It's almost like I planned it, uh, that we have 540 here. So I know that at pretty much max extension, that's where it's going to give me uh, that 540 millimeter insane F1080 um, sort of focal length, right? So here's another reason why a pinhole camera or pinhole lens board is useful. This isn't extremely stable, and I don't have it on the most uh, of my stable tripod here, but can you imagine putting a lens on this? I mean, how much weight would be in the front of this thing? I mean, this is not a, this is a field camera. It's supposed to be lightweight. Uh, you know, it's supposed to, you know, get the job done within reason. This is at the limit, literally, of this camera. So putting a heavy lens on here, not really gonna work out too well. Of course, you can get a better tripod. You might be able to reinforce something, make a base plate for this. But then, like you know, then it becomes a studio camera anyway. And if you want something like that, just get a get a more robust camera. But this is a really fun camera. Not nothing bashing the camera, but you wouldn't actually want to put a four, five hundred, six hundred millimeter lens on here. It ain't gonna work. So uh, let's back this up, and then we're gonna find out where three sixty is. Now this one, so I know five forty is at max extension, right? So I'm not gonna mark that, but I'm gonna show you how to mark this on the camera. So there's 300, roughly speaking, uh, right about there. Okay, that's 360 millimeters of extension. And all I'm gonna do is gonna, I have two pieces of tape. I have a piece of gaffer tape that I have cut like an inch of, and then I've actually cut a thin strip and a thick strip. The thick strip is gonna be the longer focal length. I'm just gonna take that and I'm gonna find a spot and I'm actually just gonna tape it down. Right there. Now I'm covering the actual mechanism that helped the, the rack that actually goes back and forth. So I'm gonna have to get in here and I have to make an incision so that it can actually move. And I'm just gonna do that. And the reason I put the tape on first is that I know that when this perfectly lines up, that's my 360. So I'll show you close-ups of this after I'm done. But let's move on to 180. Now I know I'm gonna have to move this to another standard. So I'm pretty sure, let's see. If 
I move this front standard to the second screw, and when I'm doing this, I'm right here at the last point, I'm gonna take my time to make sure that everything is straight and perpendicular. All right, that looks good. So let's see, how far is that? Oh, very close, one, that's like 170. So we're gonna come out to right on the back edge. Take your time when doing this to get it right. 180, right there. All right, I'm just gonna lock that down so I don't move it. So now I'm gonna find another spot for this thin tape, which let's put it right here. Obviously you don't want the tapes to overlap each other. Now I have a thin tape and a thick tape. Again, I'm going to now cut this. Now, if you want to, you could actually, you can take a marker and you can mark these, but just in case you want to change pinholes, um, you can do this so it's, it's essentially reversible. So let me show you what this looks like close up. All right, so as you can see, I put the thin piece of tape here, right where I have the 180 millimeter marking so that I know that I'll have to make a note that I have to be on the second from the rear place for the front standard. So I, I know that when I go and line those up, that's 180 millimeters of focal length. Now, this is not 360 millimeters of focal length, so I'm gonna have to remember that. I have to be on the fifth ring way out here, and then when those line up, so actually I could just line those up and then I just have to remember to move the front standard way up here. And then once I'm on here, and everything is straight, something like that. And these are lined up, they got bumped a little bit, there we go. Once everything is lined up here, I know that I'm at the 360 millimeters. And then when I'm fully extended, I'm gonna call that 540 millimeters. So that's pretty much all there is to it. The last thing that we had to do is take this lens board out of here. We can take, we can take our film holder out. And put the dark slide back in. And now we're pretty much good to go. All we gotta do is actually take our lens board and our pinhole. And I think I'm gonna use just use uh, gaffer's tape um, and just get this as close to center as possible. And then gaffer tape uh, a bunch of it and make sure there's no light coming in from any of the sides. As long as there's enough tape, it should be fine. Um, because then I, I don't want to glue it down necessarily because then I can reuse this lens board if I want to ever change pinholes. Uh, for example, if I wanted to actually make a 540 millimeter pinhole that wasn't a macro lens, it didn't have an insane f-stop, I would have to actually get a larger pinhole than this 0.5 millimeter one to make that. How can we find that out? We can always go back to our equation, plug 540 into here and get the optimal diameter. So that's pretty much it. I'm just going to gaffer tape this, put it on here, and now I've got uh, essentially three lenses in one. I wonder if I can do anything with this. That might be coming in future videos. So if you aren't already, already subscribed, please consider subscribing. As always, leave your questions and comments down below. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. Stay tuned for future episodes where we're actually gonna make some photographs uh, using this and all the other pinhole cameras because it is the month of April, which is the month that has Worldwide Pinhole Photography Day at the end of it. Uh, so I gotta get cracking. I gotta get uh, some film loaded and uh, some shots taken and uh, develop some films. So I hope you'd be sharing with, it, with that soon. Hit that bell notification to stay uh, up to date with this channel. And as always, happy photographing.